Good day, good day. This is Ashira Malka coming with another question and answer topic. To those who have heard the message, who believe in the report and are planning to come out of Babylon, America, I, your sister, am doing the best that I can to encourage you, to strengthen you, and to provide for you the wisdom of Yahweh by way of his Torah and by faith in the testimony of Yah Yehoshua HaMashiach as well as my experience here in the land. It is a commandment of Yahweh to flee America so that you do not partake in her sins, neither do you receive in her plagues. We have established on this channel that there is a commandment, there is a call, there is a crying out that has went forward, and it is Yahweh's words screaming and hollering for his people to flee Babylon, America. Now, I know that there is a scope of this that some may not understand, as some may be learning of the concept to come out of her, my people. However, I am under the leadership of Nabiya Sibaya, who is a prophet of Yahweh, who sent out a call back in 2018 to those who would hear and do that there is a destruction, there is a siege, there is the wrath of Yahweh that is coming on America. Understand that Babylon has been prophesied in the time of Daniel, in the time of Isaiah, in the time of Jeremiah. There's a spirit that is hopping along the way where Babylon is continuing to live. It is a great merchant city, one where other countries come and they trade goods, services, as well as wealth. In the time of Daniel, he received a vision from the angel of Yahweh saying that Babylon was going to be cut down. At that time, at that place, that particular Babylon, it was going to be cut down through the rule of Nebuchadnezzar. However, Yahweh said that there will be remain a stump which will grow again into a great place where my people will be again in captivity and addict themselves and they will not repent. We understand that, yes, there is a 400-year prophecy of slavery that a lot of our brothers and our sisters, especially the leadership, is teaching to return to what they're saying is the promised land, which is in Africa. I'll say here completely that I disagree with that. However, I do know that Yahweh's word was sent out, and there is a prophecy against those who go into Africa and how the beast will follow you all the way there. I'm going to get into that. We can cover several scriptures where it speaks about a second exodus after the 400-year period of the children of Israel in captivity. And there has been a call that has went out. All of Israel were called to this call, which is to come out, to be clean, to be purified, to become righteous so that we can serve Yahweh in the wilderness. We also understand that the wicked will hear that call. All the way up into the wilderness, there will be rebels. There will be rebels who come out with the righteous and will tear this whole entire awakening apart. Everything that Yah has called us to do in this awakening, the rebels are doing the complete opposite. Yahweh says to return in quietness and in comfort of his spirit, but he also says, but there are those of you who will not. There will be people coming out and making a boastful noise. They will use the YouTube and record. (laughs) They will record their return and let all of the other nations know exactly what they're doing, how they're doing it, where to go, and so forth. Yes, All of the world will soon know about this mass exodus. However, we do know that Yahweh's word says that the kingdom of heaven will not be observed with eyes. Is the exodus the example of the kingdom of heaven manifesting? No, it is not. The same way that Yahweh brought out the children of Israel from Egypt out of that place into the wilderness, there is a start, there is a middle, and there is is an end. And as we recognize in the scriptures from that start, Yahweh through Moses and Aaron were sent into Egypt to redeem his people out of bondage. There were some who heard it, obeyed it, and there was others who were condemned along with the Egyptians who were against Yah's word. We're going to go into it. And as 
the children of Israel came out of Egypt. It was 40 years that they wandered in the wilderness because of what? Because of rebellion, because of stiff-necked behavior and attitude, because of a hardness of heart, and because of pride and the love of Egypt and its idols. It is not lost on me the full detail of this return. I am a disciple of Yah Yehoshua through Nabi Sibaya, who is a prophet of Yahweh. Explaining the 400 year captivity all the way down to the vision that Abraham was given, she gave all of the answers. And so I have put up resources, I put up videos so that you can glean from that. I'm here to provide answers to your questions in preparing to come out of America. Every now and again, I'll receive a question or not even a question, just a straight up challenge about this return and what it is that I'm doing as well as other people are doing who have come out of America and have come in places like the Middle East, which is prophesied to be the land of our inheritance the land that was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And because there are several leaders, false prophets, teaching and deceiving the people and showing them false maps and teaching them false doctrines about where the land is, then there you have confusion. There you have people who have heaped up teachers to their own lusts and, and to their own itching ears to tell them and prophesy to them smooth words, good things, peace, and prosperity. But we know that Yahweh is a destroyer, and he's come to bring a, a sword of division before he has come to gather us. And so this walk is not going to be easy. It is going to be very challenging. There's going to be persecution. There's going to be oppression. But as Yahweh says, as my name is Yahweh, and I am the sovereign, I am the almighty, and I am your Elohim, there is no one to fear. Follow me, learn of me, and you will grow in understanding. I will teach you my wisdom. I will show you my judgments. I will restore to you counselors and judges according to my name and according to my purpose. I will restore into you the Torah, the commandments of Yahweh. And there, there, in the place that I have called you, you will then become a people to me. And so we have a lot of ways to go. And I am not one saying that I have arrived, but I've been on this YouTube scene for some years. And a lot of you have seen my ups and my downs, and I have, I have gone through a lot. And I am not sitting here before you claiming to be perfect. However, I am showing you through example and also as an encouragement. That as this life meets you with so much opposition, when you are striving and trying your best to do what's right and to do what's holy and to walk according to Yahweh's commandments, the devils are there. Satan is there to tempt you, to thwart you, to bruise the hill of Yehoshua that you have found. And so I am one that strongly believes that the faith and the testimony of Yah Yehoshua is present. It is living and it is breathing. And as Yahweh has lived and he showed us through his actions and through his purpose on this earth, how to deal with Pharisees and Sadducees, how to deal with people who are unbelieving and just unrelenting on their own doctrines, and also how to deal with those who are truly seeking, those, those who are truly sick and ill, those who are brokenhearted, and those who are just weak, how to deal with all parties, all situations call for a certain assertiveness or compassion and kindness. All situations call for wisdom and discernment. And I've been in these lands to experience anti-Messiahs, to experience blasphemers, to experience slanders, to see people literally take a situation and blow it up into something where now my life is in danger. I've seen what it looks like when someone is given a judgment over something so small, spilt milk, literally. And because there's something on the inside of them, because there's anger, because there's bitterness, because there's hatred of something that happened before they even came into our ministry, because they did not receive the true testimony of Yah Yehoshua, which is repent 
from all of your sins and be cleaned. Then they want to make you the problem. Then they want to turn on you and say that you're the one that's doing evil and you're the one that's Satan and you're the one that I'm going to expose. I've been here several times before and it is not new territory. However, hallelujah to Yahweh, Yah, Yehoshua, who has given his word and it's good not only for him, but also for us. And so I'm going to do this a little different. I'm going to break this up in at least five parts, because I want to address the comment. And as this comment was addressed in the comment section, we know that when you give somebody the truth, and even when you rebuke what it is that they are judging, which is the righteousness of Yahweh, they're not going to bow down gracefully. They're not going to relent. They're not going to repent. They're just going to come right back, and they're going to try to twist the dagger even harder. And so I want this to be an example for you, my brother and sister, who love Yahweh and desire to keep his commandments, how to wield the sword of Yahweh, how to stand on truth, and how to combat Satan on the inside of you and on the outside of you. So I pray and I sincerely hope that these five-part videos that I'm getting ready to do is an encouragement to your faith and to your growth. And as you learn of Yahweh, there is a way to handle. Yehoshua says, be as shrewd, as wise as serpents, and as harmless as doves. That can mean several things depending on the situation. He's teaching us how to deal with our brothers, and he's teaching us how to deal with strangers. Now, there are certain instances where being as harmless as doves and wise as serpents is simply doing no harm. Don't repay evil for evil. If somebody has slapped you in the face, give them your cheek and let them slap the other. Don't pay insult for insult. However, when someone is judging the commandments of Yahweh and turning the righteousness and the holiness of Yahweh into evil, that's when you got to put on the whole armor of Yah and deal with it the way Yehoshua dealt with it when he grabbed the belt and he whipped the changing tables and the people who were selling in the tabernacle. That's how you deal with people trying to twist Yah's word and make it for gain for them, to make it that whatever you said by Yah's word is not what he really said. Yehoshua said at the time that he did that, he said, you have turned my father's house into a den of thieves. No, this place will be a place of prayer. And that's what our leaders have done today. They tell the people to come in to keep the seventh day holy with them. But on the same day, they ask of you for money. In the same way, they tell you to go buy a plot of land and make gardens for yourself in the place of your captivity in America. If Yahweh is saying to come out of her, my people, and that that place is a cage for every unclean thing and every hateful bird, who's lying? Where? In Yah's word, can you find the balance of what exactly is it that he's saying? If you have the prophets of old telling us to run, to flee, to deliver yourselves, to come out from amongst the place, the land of the Chaldees, Babylon, and then you have other people saying, where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Why are you going to leave? Wait on Yah. Who is lying? Whose word do we discern? is the truth. And so this is, my friends, my opportunity to show, to wield the sword of Yahweh and to discern the spirit that you're speaking to and to give glory to Yahweh in return. So this is what I'm going to do. I addressed this comment in the comment section. And I know that a lot of questions that are given to me are, um, some people accept the answers in the in the comment sections. And then other times when I feel like I need to expound more, I will create a video and I will talk more on it because this texting thing, the the comment section, it can be it can get a little lengthy, right? And so this is in the video Trumpet Call, The Faith of Moses. This is a 43 minute video where I expounded on Yahweh telling Moses that he is going to redeem the children of Israel with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. And he's coming up against Pharaoh, who is a mighty, a mighty man. But to not fear, 
because Yahweh is the king of kings and he's going to reign over all and all will be subject to him and we'll have to confess that he is indeed the only one with power and he's the one who gives the power. And so in this, I had expressed some people who are saying that it's evil to get a passport or there's no need to get a passport. And I said very clearly several reasons why someone would say that if they really don't want to pay. And at the bulk of it, it's rebellion. At the bulk of it, people who don't believe that they have to pay for a passport in order to flee America, and I'm talking about those who truly believe in coming out, then there is a a, a confusion. There is something that they're hearing outside of the perfect will of Yah, and it's not congruent. It's not making any sense. So, of course, in this situation, the children of Israel fled. They fled out of Egypt. Now, today, in order to leave, you need to have a passport. That is your legal document to be able to travel to and fro. But you have some people who believe that it's evil to get a passport, but they believe somehow that Yah is going to get them out. And so then my question would be, how do you think that? Unless you believe in the rapture, which is a poofing up in the air, right? You're going to be in Babylon and the go down is going to go down and Yah is going to poof you up in the air. There's your passport, right? Okay, if you say so. And then you have some who say, well, Yah is going to do a new thing. He's going to come get us. But how is he going to come get you? Is he doing it by Moses again? Because I understand through Yahweh's prophecy that it's not going to be by one man anymore. It's going to be us delivering ourselves. Then you have some people saying, well, I'm going to stay right here. Okay, you can stay right there. That's perfectly fine. However, Yahweh says, if you do that, there's one or two things that's going to happen. You're either going to still flee, but as refugees, meaning there's no protection for you. Physically, there's no protection for you. I don't know if anybody's familiar with what it looks like to be a refugee, especially now today. There are several um, groups uh, and races of people coming out of their native lands. For instance, what's going on now in Mexico and what's going on um, on the border of Texas. You have a lot of people coming into the borders and they're coming in illegally. They don't have protection. They don't have benefits. They don't have anything that secures their life. And so they are just basically a Jane and a John Doe. The the government of, of of that place that they came in can literally do anything to them. Yo ayer, eh, primero, me solidaricé y eh, reivindiqué el extraordinario trabajo que están haciendo las fuerzas y cuerpos de seguridad del Estado en nuestro país. Algunas de ellas, personas, guardias civiles, que eh, fueron heridas como consecuencia de este asalto violento, y quiero además volver a repetir esa calificación, violento y organizado por parte de mafias que trafican con seres humanos a una ciudad que es bueno, territorio español. Por tanto, fue un ataque a la integridad territorial de nuestro país, de una manera violenta. The action of these uh, last hours, it's a consequence, direct, direct consequence of, of the agreement which uh, recently uh, among the governments of Morocco and Spain. So um, basically uh, the externalization of migration without taking into consideration human rights and, and the life of these people uh, relies also on the, on the, on the back of, of the Spanish government as well. But they were refugees. They were fleeing oppression from one place and they ran out. And, 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 and I want to put the seriousness of this, right? Because we're American. We've never had to deal with anything like that in our personal spaces. We are not refugees. A lot of us are born and raised in America. But that's also the pride of us that Yahweh talks about, that nothing can touch us. So that's the first way, refugees. The second 
that Yahweh says will happen to those of you who do not come out of America is you're going to be caught up in the siege and slaughtered. We're going to cover it. We're going to go over it. In the Exodus, there were several Israelites who didn't believe Moshe and they stayed behind. They didn't do the Passover. They didn't put the blood on their doorpost. They didn't flee in the morning with Moses and the rest of them. They stayed behind. And the moment Pharaoh and his army came to and their wrath was kindled, not only did Pharaoh kill them, the Israelites who were still in Egypt at the time, but Pharaoh also chased Israel all the way to the Red Sea. And we're going to talk more about how we're dealing with the same Yahweh, the same power, and we're dealing with the same arrogance and the same pride of our people. Therefore, the same thing is going to happen. History is going to repeat itself. And the issue that we're having now with history is if we're not learning from our history, we are bound to repeat it. And so this is the video. And I, I simply said that anybody who believes they don't have to get a passport is a rebel. That's a general judgment. That's a judgment. And I went on to explain, let's talk about why one wouldn't have it. Debts, right? Perhaps you're in a situation where you can't, can't come out because of financial restraints or whatever. And I, and I deal with that. I deal with that. That's the reason for this channel is to provide resources for you to see that there's other avenues in order to obey the commandment of Yahweh. But then you have that group say, well, I have money, but I'm not going to get a passport. So this is what I want to address. Don't know this person from Adam. I'm just going to address them according to their handle here. Joanne Bullard 7312. And I'm going to also show you the comment that is held in review. And I had every decision to respond to that in a, in a comment. But I want my family to be edified by the word. And I am not here to do tit for tat. I am not here to debate. I am not here to even convince anybody who does not believe. I am here for that one, that one person who heard the message through Nabia Sibaya specifically who believe in the report, who see what's going on, who don't need a sign from heaven to show them there's something that's going to happen, and who are planning to come out of America. Planning, that means that they're doing something by faith that eventually the end goal is to come out. And that's who I'm speaking to. I'm going to address this, this person, but this is the reason why I'm doing it. It's for you, my brother and my sister, who are planning to come out. And so I'm giving time and I'm giving energy to this for you. Hallelujah to Yahweh. I give him the glory and honor and praise because it's by his spirit alone, not by might, not by any man, but by his spirit alone will we be saved in this very dark day. So I'm going to read. Mm -hmm. 